Hi, my name is Melissa Hart, and I'm going to be presenting about the school's weather and air quality or SWAC project. I'm presenting this on behalf of the whole of the SWAC team. So many members mentioned there on the slide, but the team is even much larger than what I've mentioned. So um, presenting on behalf of all of them. So uh, the title of my um, presentation is When Citizen Science Meets the Built Environment, and that's what SWAC does. So let me tell you more about SWAC. So this is a citizen science project where we've placed weather and air quality sensors in schools across Sydney. The students collect and analyse the research quality data in science and maths curriculum aligned classroom activities. And then the data is freely available online to the public and researchers. So our motivation behind SWAC was that um, Sydney's population is going to grow 30% uh, in the next 20 years. And with this increased urbanisation, you have impacts to both the urban climate and air quality. So urban climate, we tend to find that uh, cities are warmer than their rural surrounds due to the influence of urbanisation, um, sort of retaining heat within the city. And so it's really important to try and capture that information within the city, just how hot it is in different parts of the city, how this may differ spatially across the city. And then air quality, um, cities uh, have tend to have poorer air quality than rural surrounds as well. And that also can vary spatially depending on emissions, depending on weather conditions. So we were wanting to also um, expand uh, observations of meteorology and air quality in areas of new urban growth. So in Sydney, this is concentrating on um, the southwest and northwest of the city where there's really rapid growth under being undertaken, so we wanted some more observations in that area for our research. Um, so our need was to increase monitoring sites with research quality data across Sydney for urban meteorology and air quality, and also to improve community engagement and agency regarding urban meteorology and climatology. So our sensor that we use, um, they're cited differently to your sort of traditional Bureau of Meteorology or state government air quality sensors um, and meteorological sensors, which tend to be in areas like you can see here on the left, where they're grass, um, above grass, not near any buildings. Um, really, these sites are trying to not gather um, the influence of the urban area because they used to understand particularly for weather, the weather conditions on a sort of broader scale. So they're not wanting to capture the conditions within the urban area. They want to capture the broader scale weather patterns that are coming through. For us, in SWAC, we're really interested. We want to know how hot it is in a playground where children are playing, um, within different parts of the school, within different urban areas where you might have a car, a road, busy road driving past where there's lots of emissions, um, lots of heat being released from the vehicles. So our sensors, quite different to um, the government regulatory sensors, but can also be used alongside government regulatory sensors to inform research about urban air quality and meteorology. So our sensors, we want to put in the cities. And so this is what they look like. Um, you can see that our sensors are uh, solar paneled, They've got a little SIM card, so they just um, transmit data in, in real time by sort of mobile networks. Um, they, you can see the different conditions. So in some of our schools that we put them in, they're actually at um, schools that have got quite a lot of grass area, but other some of them more inner city schools like this, there's really not sort of much green area and you've got more buildings and such. So we're capturing the differences of across um, the different um, school conditions across the city. So we did, when deciding on where to put the sensors, we um, did some spatial analyses, looking at those things we we're particularly interested in, like areas of urban growth, as I said. Um, we looked at distance from roads. We looked at where there were sort of current monitoring networks. Um, we looked at areas where there may be people that are particularly vulnerable to heat and air quality, and then we chose where to cite our sensors based on the results of that analysis. Now, this project is slightly different to a lot of citizen science projects in that it is um, our sensors that we use that are 
the main way that we collect data. It's set and forget. Like you put the sensors in and then you walk away and leave them and they do their job. And most people can just walk past and not notice them there. Them there. So our citizen engagement came down to really using the data um, and that's where we wanted to work with um, sort of our key target audience, which is school students and school teachers from the very beginning. So what we did was um, we realised that the key way that people were going to find out about our data was our website. And when developing our website, we made sure that we worked with school students from the very beginning. So we ran what um, were concept testing workshops with groups of high school students. And we um, used these concept testing workshops to find out, firstly, what the students knew about um, air quality and air quality variables. Um, so when we ran this workshop, it aligned quite nicely where there was a dust storm uh, just the week before. So that was good. So we could ask the students if they were aware what they knew about the dust storm, um, and what the impacts on their lives or their family were from the dust storm. We could ask them simple questions about if they knew they could look up air quality, which um, only half of them did. Um, and we could also take this even further and look at the meteorological data too and ask them how they found out about weather data. So for um, a lot of them, it was just a phone app um, uh, or their family and friends, a lot said their mums, um, or they simply with Google. And then we would ask them also um, what were the variables they would look up. So uh, the key ones were temperature and rain and then the others not so much. So from this it was actually quite interesting because we found out um, what their level of knowledge was, what they were particularly interested in, and then we could use that then to ensure that we that, that was represented, their needs, their wants, their interests was represented within how we um, showed the data, how we uh, delivered the data on our website. We also asked them, gave them scenarios, said, okay, if you had some air quality data, how would you like it to be visualised? Like what, what would you look for in visualisation of data? And these are some examples, some really nice examples. Um, so this one is showing sort of little icons of lungs. Um, this one, an icon of a masked face and a masked face. This was pre-COVID too, so they were talking masks then. Um, this one here it was showing, you know, if you would just shade the area um, at the city, depending on whether the air quality was very good or very bad. Uh, we did, again, these are just some examples, but the same with weather. So they were particularly interested, again, in icons, icons that showed um, what the weather was like on that day, what people were experiencing. They were particularly interested in what the conditions were like compared to the day before. Um, they were really keen on any animations, anywhere you could click and learn more about um, the variables that you're looking at. And this was really important when it came to air quality and they were, um, you know, a lot of variables that they perhaps not aware, with, aware of. And so they were really interested in being able to click and learn more about particular matter and things like that. So we took all of this information and worked with our wonderful web developers um, to develop the website, taking on board the actual feedback from the school students. And this is uh, what our website looks like. You can go to swap.org.au. And the front, the first um, page, if you click explore where the data comes in. So the data feeds in in real time, um, every hour. And on the first page, it's quite simple information. There's some nice icons for the different variables. There's animations you can click on and learn more about the impacts of the city on weather and more about air pollutants. And then a list of the current schools that we're monitoring at and what the conditions are like at that very much at that time. From there, you can click into a school and it will give you more information. So you start to look at individual um, air pollutants, you look at time series graphs over the last sort of seven days or 24 hours, and you can see when on this day where we've just taken a screen capture where there was a peak in air quality at this point of time. So there's more information there. Um, so taking the data, we've got the data coming into the website now. This is publicly available for anyone. The next part of our citizen science component 
um, within SWAC was to actually then build it into education resources. So we had buy-in from teachers and schools as part of the project proposal, which was fantastic. And then we've what we've done is we've been developing um, Australian National Curriculum and New South Wales Syllabus Aligned Resources and Exercises in order for schools to use the data from our sensor. So it could be if they happen to have a sensor on their school site, the data from their own school, if not a data, data from any of the other schools, all are freely available. And use the data or use the sensors in curriculum aligned classroom activities. So some examples here, just a couple of examples. We've got on our website a whole range of um, these uh, classroom activities and lesson plans. Um, there's a concentration on primary schools to start with. However, we do have some for high schools and some more coming. But some examples is in primary stage one, um, there's lesson plans that identify how daily and seasonal changes in the environment affects humans and other living things. So this is aligned directly with the syllabus. Um, in high school, uh, science students in New South Wales um, now have 30 to 15 to 30 hours of depth study that students must carry out and contribute to their assessment. So there's a ways in which they can use the data that we collected as part of this depth study. Um, I'll just show you an example of a couple of the, um, the just uh, screenshots of parts of the lesson plan. So these are both early stage one primary school. Um, so this one, you, the understanding daily weather. So it's where the students um, is repeated for each day of the week. Um, and the students make observations about current weather conditions. And then they look at the data from the nearest SWAC weather station. So really understanding, okay, it's warm today, it feels warm today. Let's go and look at the temperature from the closest weather station and see actually what the temperature is on this warm day. And then another example here where the students um, actually grow sprouts and, and look at the different amounts of water that's helped to, uh, um, and how that impacts the sprouts. And then they can compare it to rainfall data as well that's collected um, from the weather station. So we've got as I said, uh, examples of these all the way through to high school on our website, really wanting these to be picked up and used um, as freely as possible. They were developed by uh, Katie Quayle, who is one of our PhD students at UNSW, but is also a maths teacher. And, and they've been, as in the process of developing the lessons, we've taken them to multiple science teachers conferences and run workshops with science teachers as well. So we've had a lot of back and forth, a lot of feedback, and the feedback from the, the teachers, the science and maths teachers has helped to um, further inform these lesson plans. Um, again, though, if you know anyone who works in this space, we're always looking for further feedback and for people to use um, these lesson plans even further. Now, going further from schools, uh, SWAC's also been involved in a lot of science engagement as well. So as, as I said at the beginning, this is a slightly different citizen science project to some um, in that uh, the main sense is we have a set and forget. However, we also do have um, engagement activities that we've run with high school students or also part of um, National Science Week's events uh, where we um, can use sort of handheld sensors or um, sort of experiments that you can run just, you know, in um, an outdoor environment that talk about the weather and air quality within a city. So uh, some examples here from National Science Week, Science in the Swamp, or different open days at universities and such. Um, but we've also run workshops where we've had high school students come in and they'll work with uh, the data coming from our fixed point sensors, but also from sensors that uh, can measure the surface temperature of different building characteristics. So be involved in collecting the data that way. Um, just linking to the research, the data has now been published and is available on turn. So we hope that people are using this for research as much as possible. Um, for our own research, uh, we have one publication out now that looked at air quality impacts of the Black Summer wildfires on Australian schools, and we've got a couple of others in review at the moment. So hopefully you'll see more and more research coming out, but we're always happy for others to be using the data and for more research to come from this. 